Hi everyone, thank you so much for signing up for this session. So today we are doing a lightning session uh, for 15 minutes on the best approach for performance testing in Agile, the two week sprint. So this is going to be fun. Let's get started. So before we move on a little bit about myself. So I work as a senior QA and a performance architect in an MLC. I have about 15 years of IT experience and I have also founded the association called American Association of Information Technology Professionals. Um, we normally talk about the latest technology, we do webinar, we conduct events, we collaborate with other IT professionals. Uh, please do check out, follow the company page. Uh, it will be very helpful for you. So today's session is really interesting. Uh, something everyone would have gone through if you are a performance tester working in an agile methodology. I want to level set that uh, what is performance testing and what is agile methodology and scrum before we move ahead uh, so if anyone who is not from this background gets familiarized so basically performance testing is a way of ensuring that your application is performing well when i say performing well it just makes sure uh, the speed uh, the stability and even if you're using multiple concurrent users you are able to access the application without any performance issues so that's the simplest way of putting forward. And again, in performance testing, there are multiple ways uh, to test the application. Few of them are load test, stress test, spike testing, endurance, scalability, and volume testing. Uh, this is all about performance testing. So now let's look at what is an agile. So agile basically um, in the traditional way when we have to do any product development, it was a waterfall. Uh, usually it was a three month uh, release cycle where development would used to happen mm -hmm. and testing used to happen after that and UAT and it get launched into production. So there was a lot of issues when it comes to if there are any uh, requirements has to be changed or if uh, any fixes has to be done later in the stage. Uh, it was causing a lot of uh, rework and uh, also causing a lot of money. So that's when Agile uh, came into picture. Agile is a way of doing the same uh, three months uh, release or a longer one in an iterative manner instead of you go going full fledged uh, you will be uh, dividing the work into smaller chunks and trying to approach it um, so there are two ways uh, the agile is done one is scrum and another one is kanban scrum is where the sprint is used usually it's a two week sprint so beginning of the sprint you try to uh, get together and understand what is the amount of work can be achieved for that specific sprint and uh, your entire team start working towards it. So the goal is to have a shapeable product, a product which is uh, can be the deep plugged into production at the end of two weeks instead of you waiting for uh, three months. So that's the advantage. So Kanban is more towards having um, not having two week sprint. Here you will have a list of work, let's say a top 10 priority uh, based on your capacity and team. So if one of the development is done, uh, automatically a new requirement fills in to the top 10. So you only focus on the amount of user stories instead of focusing on a time bound two weeks. So that's about all about Agile. So with the evolution of Agile, there has been a lot of challenges when it comes to testing. So let's first look into what challenges testing as a whole faces. Uh, the very first thing is uh, changing requirements. Agile is more suitable to have requirements uh, changed as we go. So within two weeks, uh, there could be additional requirements or tweaks coming in. So when that comes in development, more changes automatically, the testing efforts also increase. So uh, this is one of the challenges uh, testing team always has. The requirements, there's a scope of changing or enhancing. We always have to adjust to it. And uh, also whenever uh, we use two week sprints, you might have noticed that information is very limited because Agile do not encourage having a lot of documentation. So uh, you have to really reach out to get the information. Everyone is working on a tight uh, schedule. So the information flow is little restricted. So you will have to really go to your way to get all the required uh, information you need. So that's another challenge. Um, with, with a two week sprint, again, no one has a lot of time to spare. So the communication between the teams, communication uh, with the stakeholders is limited. Uh, sometimes they are so focused in their specific work, the communication gap arises. So that can cause 
lead to more issues. So that's one of the challenges we have. And continuous testing has to be done uh, because continuous development is being done. So before deploying, we have to test and ensure uh, the system is stable. So again, we have to put more effort in making sure continuously testing it and ensuring application is good. And at last, we have a very limited testing time. So when it comes to two week sprint, uh, everything has to be done within the two weeks. So development, testing, um, the acceptance, so usually the development takes more time, the major chunk of the two-week sprint. So testing team will definitely have lesser limited time compared to uh, any other development or any other uh, team. So it's very limited time. We have to deal with it. So these are all the common challenges when it comes to Agile as a whole, when it comes to testing team. Uh, performance testing team will face an additional challenge. Uh, the reason for that is Unlike a functional testing team, uh, we have to develop script, uh, we have to run the test and uh, there is so many procedures involved with it and code needs to be stable, uh, shouldn't have any bugs. So there are more constraints for performance testing. So how do we tackle this? So how do we approach uh, performance testing in Agile? So there are a couple of ways we can do it. We are going to look into all three of them. So the first approach would be going as is, meaning you just go with the current sprint. So two week sprint, your performance testing needs to be done in the two week itself. So there is no way out. Whatever limited time you get, you have to work in the time itself. Uh, it's also called as in sprint performance testing. So usually at the end, we get very less time um, to develop scripts and complete our testing and troubleshoot, but you have to plan uh, very aggressively. So there are some techniques you can possibly use to improvise your overall performance testing approach. We are going to talk about that later in this uh, presentation, but you have less time. So that's, that's a fact. And code is usually not very stable because since it's still in development in the sprint, so there are chances the bug fixes are still happening. There are chances some minor changes are still happening. So that is going to impact your performance testing also. So this is the first approach where you go in sprint by sprint. So let's talk about this approach number two. So this is more favored approach for performance testing. Uh, the reason for that is if you do, it's called sprint minus one. Uh, sprint N is any current sprint, N minus one is, let's say if your development is happening in sprint two and performance testing team will always be one sprint behind. So what is the advantage of this is, once your development is done in sprint and it is completed, it is tested, code is stable, only then you're touching the code and then you're doing a performance testing. So that way the code is, uh, you're getting is more stable. Uh, it's already tested and uh, you it's already uh, unit tested. So you will have more uh, flexibility and time uh, because when, as I showed in the beginning, performance testing also has a couple of different testing types needs to be done. So this will give you enough time to develop script, troubleshoot, rerun them, and uh, suggest any performance fixes. If it is done, you can again, go back and test it again and ensure the performance uh, criteria are met. So this is most preferred, uh, wherever it is possible, we should be aiming for this. Beyond this, there is also one more approach, uh, which many of the uh, companies or teams would like to take is a hybrid approach. So other than outside, if you look outside the sprint, uh, if, you, if you don't want to restrict yourself to two weeks of what getting developed there, there are additional non-functional testing which needs to be done specifically on the infrastructure uh, that may not be documented in the sprint effectively. So here what team does is it tries to make use of both in sprint and um, a sprint minus one or the entire uh, feature level user stories. So multiple user stories will be parallelly taken care uh, based on the priority. Let's say if the in sprint performance testing is needed, anything critical is going in, then you can prioritize that. And if it is not needed, definitely you can move outside the current sprint and start working towards uh, any other user stories which make sense for performance. 
because not all user stories or not all uh, product enhancement which is built sometimes are eligible for performance testing. We usually target for the one which has a very high volume. Um, so this this approach, hybrid approach, uh, works well in such situations. So this definitely helps in achieving a very high efficiency. And more and more teams I um, know of is uh, working on the hybrid uh, approach. So since it's agile, since it's two week sprint, uh, there are only a couple of ways you can uh, do performance testing. So these three are the major ones. Uh, please do write it down in a comment or, or message me in LinkedIn and let me know what approach your team is taking. Uh, if there are any best practices you guys are following, definitely that's worth sharing with, with everyone else. So since we talked about the approach and uh, how uh, the performance testing and agile uh, overview is, let's also look into the best practices. So irrespective of which approach you take, uh, there are always few best practices for performance testing you can follow in agile, which is going to make your testing much more efficient. To start off with, always make sure when a sprint definition is created, uh, performance testing is also included in the definition of done. So when, when they do it, they will not be able to sign off a sprint till this condition is done as well. So there will be more emphasis on performance testing that is going to add more value uh, in the way testing is done. So definitely make sure uh, you, you get this done. And I've seen since it's a limited time, um, there are non-functional requirements which are not effectively created or defined. And more often the business team or stakeholders are not very familiar with non-functional requirements. We have to do a little bit of hand-holding here. So make sure it is defined properly. Go for a discussion, ensure they understand uh, the expectations are realistic and achievable and uh, it is properly defined. So bring them into the practice so that you will also get a relevant uh, user stories to work on. So it will work more seamlessly for you. And CICD is one area where performance executions are not uh, always included. Um, please try to include it. Uh, the reason for that is if, if whenever you're building a performance scripts or you're doing an execution. If all of them can be uh, put in a scenario and executed whenever there's a deployment happening, um, every time the performance execution is done, then it will automatically uh, testing the system performance. So you will be much more ensuring the application is performance stable. Um, so always try to include your performance testing uh, in the CI CD pipeline. And also practice shift left performance testing. Since it's a two week sprint, we really do not have to wait till the end uh, where development is done and we have received the code to performance test. Uh, you can also do some sort of testing ahead of time. Uh, I'll probably do a detailed session on this. So Lighthouse is one such report you can generate uh, for any web page. It can automatically screen and give you performance enhancement. Uh, you can further take that and do your analysis and suggest uh, any performance improvement. Just as an example, if a page takes five seconds to load uh, for one single user and your expectation is to run for 100 users within three seconds, then there is no way it's gonna achieve it. So even before you start creating script, developing, executing, and then sharing uh, your feedback as it is not performance efficient, with ship left, while it is getting built, you can give uh, this sort of, uh, um, your feedback directly to the development team that is going to help in building much more efficient uh, system altogether. So I I hope this session was helpful. We wanted it to be very quick and informative. Um, I hope you have learned something new today. Uh, feel free to join our association. We do conduct a lot of uh, webinars and sessions through there. And also feel free to uh, connect with me in LinkedIn. Um, definitely will collaborate wherever there is an opportunity. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.